Hey, Risha, look, there's Mars and Leo the lion. Amazing, Ellie, you're quite the stargazer. Let me turn the lights off so you can see it better. Can you believe we're living in space now? Yeah, this space city is way cool. It's the next giant leap for humankind. Yeah, and we just had this flurry of tourists, and now this big rotating space city. So the simulated gravity feels a lot like Earth's gravity. So what are you working on? A project for school. It's about the conflicts that surface when we try to understand the universe. I'm calling it Sky Wars. You know, all the cosmic arguments, like is the Earth flat? Does the Earth really move? Let me show you some of the video clips in the surf room. Surf room? What's that? Risha, how long have you been living on this space city? Two weeks. I just moved here. my first chapter, Astronomy versus Astrology. These two still battle today. I think they both try to make connections to stars and planets. They just do it differently. Astronomy is a science using observations and measurements. And astrology is a belief, what someone thinks or feels. Makes sense, but people still get confused about their differences. They do sometimes. What other sky battles do you have? Surf, run, round versus flat. But Lose the robot voice. Do an ancient Greek voice like Aristotle. Centuries ago, people recognized that the Earth is round by simply watching a ship sail out to sea. The ship never disappears suddenly, like it fell off the edge of a flat Earth. What they saw was the hull of the ship disappearing first. Next, they slowly lost sight of the sail then finally, the top of the mast vanishes. This can only happen on a round Earth. Computer, open two sunrises. This is the tallest building in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the U.S. Bank Center, just before sunrise. We have two cameras set up. The video on the left is at the ground, just six meters above Lake Michigan. 
The video on the right is from the top floor, way up there, 41 stories high. Notice each clock has the same time. Who will see the sunrise first? There it is. People at the top see the sun rise first. They see further because of the Earth's curvature. If the Earth was flat, the sun would rise at the same time in both places. We're still waiting for the ground sunrise. <laughs> oh, this is taking a while. There it is. Sunrise from the ground, two minutes and 18 seconds later. Two sunrises from the same location, but only on around Earth. Sorry, Flat Earthers. Surf, show lunar eclipse next. Over 2,000 years ago, Aristotle observed that during a lunar eclipse, the shadow of the Earth on the moon is always curved. Because spheres make rounded shadows. A pancake Earth would make a line shadow moving across the moon, but we never see that. Computer, project astronaut Earth footage. I do not I'm still working on this scene. It's amazing to think that there's still a flat Earth society. I mean, so many astronauts have shown us directly that the Earth is round. And now there's us, people living in space. We can just look out the window and see our lovely, round world. Guess we can't all agree on everything, but this one seems like a no-brainer. We'll just have to bring a few Flat Earthers up here. What's your next starry squabble? Sir, project moving versus motion. Speak as Galileo did. Galileo? Cool. Brilliant astronomer. Kind of a rebel, too. I, Galileo Galilei, lived in Italy around 500 years ago. I had a brilliant, inquisitive mind. My studies of motion helped Isaac Newton discover his laws of gravity. When the telescope was invented, my investigations revealed spots on the sun, craters on the moon, and maybe my biggest discovery, moons circling Jupiter. revealing firsthand everything did not go around a motionless Earth. My new findings startled even me. I championed Nicholas Copernicus's solar system model, with the sun at the center and Earth moving around it like the other planets. My books sold well, but many others did not agree with this new universe. I fought back, trying to convince my naysayers, but to no avail. I was placed under house arrest. At my sentencing, when forced to denounce the Earth's motion, I was said to mutter, and yet it does. You know, Ellie, this is good stuff, but it's not direct proof the Earth moves. I'm going to challenge you on this one. Play devil's advocate. Sure, you're super smart. What gives? Computer, stop program. Galileo and Kepler's discoveries were phenomenal, but people still didn't see the Earth move, so they remained unconvinced. Gotcha. That's why I made this cool motion video when I visited Earth last time. Surf, play kids in cars. Do a voice like Isaac Newton. After all, he discovered the three laws of motion. Perfect, inertia. An object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion. Okay, okay. It's hard to think that everything is spinning with the Earth. Trees, houses, sidewalks, streets, kids, adults, they're all spinning fast. It just doesn't look like they are. this way. You're in the car, motoring down the street at a constant speed, say 30 miles an hour. Wow, 
You look at your car seat, your seat belt, your dish of Cheerios. It looks like they're not moving, right? But they are, as you are, cruising down the street. Now, if you cover the car windows with a black curtain and take off again, you can't tell you're moving at all. But only if the car travels at a constant speed and the road is super smooth, no bumps or potholes. The only way you would know you're moving is if the car accelerates to a higher speed, you get pushed back into your seat. or if the car slams on its brakes. You and everything else goes flying forward. Seatbelts are always a good idea. Same thing happens for people riding in an airplane. They can look around the cabin and everyone seems motionless, but these people are actually zooming through the air at over 500 miles an hour. These analogies help us understand why we do not feel the Earth move as it spins on its axis at about 1,000 miles per hour and orbits the Sun at nearly 67,000 miles per hour. I like that. Thanks, Ellie. You know, to really prove that the Earth moves, you'd have to delve into the stellar parallax or comprehend Foucault's pendulum. Yes, understanding science, like anything in life, I suppose, takes time and commitment. Let's take a break. I'm hungry. Want to go to the interactive cafe? Sounds good. I can show you my next sky battle there. Computer, exit door, please. <laughs> this place is far out. Awesome. So what's your next galactic skirmish, Ellie? It's all about Earth's place in space. I call it center versus no place special. I'll play it here, on this little dome. I haven't finished the script yet, so I'll tell you what's going on. There's the video. The Greeks pretty much put the Earth at the center of the universe, except this guy named Aristarchus, who correctly put the sun in the middle, but his astute observations and arguments never caught on. Anyway, the heliocentric universe took over, but it was many years after Galileo and Kepler. So the thinking became, the sun is now at the center of the universe. In the late 18th century, astronomer William Herschel, who built this ginormous telescope, did an amazing thing. Wait, I know him. He discovered Uranus, and his sister Caroline discovered lots of comets. Those were key findings, but Herschel wanted to map the entire universe, so he counted all the stars in every direction. Herschel came up with the first map of the Milky Way galaxy. Finally, he drew his map, and surprisingly, he found the sun was not at the center. Once again, our place in space didn't seem special. The next big change came 100 years after Herschel, with this telescope atop Mount Wilson in California, the biggest in the world at the time. It was here that Edwin Hubble found the Milky Way galaxy to be one of countless other galaxies. Naturally, people proclaimed, okay, our galaxy is at the center of all these gigantic star cities. But Hubble shocked the world again when his data revealed the universe is expanding, with the fabric of space stretching itself, carrying the gigantic galaxies in every direction. This means- Every galaxy in the universe is at the center. Wild, we came full circle. We thought we were at the center of the universe and then, as you say, we discovered our location is no place special. But ultimately, it turns out we are the center of the universe. That was a joke, Gelly. Humans think they're the center of the universe. <laughs> Get it. Good one, Risha. Let's head back to the surf. I have a few more battles left in my Sky Wars project. We're back in the surf. You know, Ellie, your project shows how change is the only constant in this universe. Everything changes. 
even tiny transformations on the molecular level. Yep, change reigns. What are you going to change this room into now? Computer, run Cosmos versus Chaos. Use your best Neil deGrasse Tyson voice. Cosmos is a Greek word. It means order. The sky, the heavens were seen as impeccably organized. The sun, moon, planets, and stars operate like clockwork. Earth, on the other hand, was chaos. Volcanoes, floods, hurricanes, earthquakes. Chaos means disorderly, the opposite of cosmos. The ancient Greeks proposed that our planet was made up of only four elements. Earth, which is the land, grass, rocks, basically everything solid. Water, all the lakes, rivers, seas. Air, invisible but obviously everywhere. And finally, fire. Everything we see, the Greeks said, consisted of some combination of these four elements. Aristotle came along and added a fifth element for the stars above. He called it the ether or quintessence. Naturally, he mused, the perfect stars could not be made from the four earthly elements. They were too chaotic. If Aristotle was alive today, he'd be shocked to discover that the heavens above are not perfect. The stars and planet Earth are made of the same stuff. The 100 plus elements of the periodic table. The elements found in the stars are not just on Earth, they're in us. We came from the stars. It was hard to accept, quite the controversy at the time, but the oxygen we breathe to stay alive was produced by nuclear fusion long ago inside a star. And hydrogen too created shortly after the Big Bang, is all around us and in us humans. Think of water, H2O. It's everywhere in the human body, even in the human heart and brain. There's 73% water. We find it in our blood, over 90% there. And surprisingly, in human bones, which are 31% water. More bizarre, hydrogen and oxygen in their liquid forms combine to make excellent rocket fuel. The elements are the same everywhere. Sometimes they're cosmic, aka orderly, sometimes they're chaotic. Okay, Risha, you ready for one more battle? Sure. You know, you could add more cool, chaotic, cosmic things to your last battle, like supernovae, exploding giant stars. Or, or black holes that devour anything that gets too close. Or even asteroids pummeling unsuspecting planets. Great idea. The final project isn't due for another month, so that will work fine. Are you ready for ET versus no ET? We still don't have the answer to that one. ET, you mean extraterrestrial, that one movie from like a hundred years ago? Exactly. Computer, use your best Carl Sagan voice. No one knows the answer to this great debate, E.T. or no E.T., but over 60% of all people on Earth believe life exists beyond the Earth. The red planet Mars offers tantalizing prospects. The new Martian astronauts here haven't confirmed any proof of life. Evidence in the rocks remains inconclusive. Further out, the moons of Jupiter, especially Europa, still need to be explored. There's water below the icy surface. The drilling missions are getting closer. Saturn's moons are still possibilities, but there are no credible clues to help answer the big life question, either for life or against life. Beyond the sun, our telescopes allow us to travel to the stars, to the faraway exoplanets. When we study data from a distant world, 
hundreds of light years away, we look for certain signatures in their atmospheres. All elements have their own spectral fingerprints, so when looking for life, we scan for the barcode that says oxygen. Studying Earth's amazing biodiversity tells us that oxygen is the essential sign of possible living organisms on a distant world. While any life detection would be startling, the hope, the idea of intelligent life, stirs our imaginations the most. The gray alien with its big eyes and head has been around a long time. Our movies have shown us many more curious extraterrestrials, but we really have no idea what they might look like or how intelligent they might be. Who will be right in the E.T. versus no E.T. debate? It is, perhaps, humankind's most mysterious and number one question. Are we alone? The answer could come tomorrow or billions and billions of years from now. Well, Grisha, that's it. My astronomy project. I still have to fine tune it a little bit. And... You rock, girl. That was amazing. You know, the universe is so massive, so mysterious, that cosmic conflicts will always be around. Arguing about what we will discover or what we think we'll discover, all of it is a good thing. It gets us closer to the truth to what's really out there. Hey, what time is it? Oh, dang it, I gotta go. Walk me out, will ya?